superior colonial nerve pain or neuropathy block and management this will be another lecture in the longer side I will cover multiple points so let's get started so the superior colonial nerve and as you see here I added the S because it's more correct to say nerves also known as gluteal cutaneous so you will see some gluteal nerve these are more deeper nerve and clunial nerve they are more superficial nerve the nerve originate from L1, L2, and L3. And as you see the course of the nerve here, however, most recent anatomical studies showed that the nerve originate from T12 to L5. Even other studies showed that it originate from T11 to L5. So as you see, there is a lot of variation in the literature. This is a more recent anatomical study. They studied 10 cadavers, and they also found that the nerve originated from T12 to L5. However, in most of the cases, the branch is coming from L1, L2, and L3. Decent uh, cadavers or 45 percent from L4 less commonly from L5 and T12. This nerve is pure sensory it 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 innervate the lower back and the buttock uh, the posterior iliac crest as well and the upper half of the buttock sometimes to the level of the greater trochanter of the femur. So these nerves, um, commonly there are uh, three nerves, the, the middle nerve here, and then you have the intermediate nerve here, and you have the lateral nerve here. Some references showed that you can have up to six branches. So these branches uh, pass through the iliocostalis lumborum, which I removed in this specific picture, uh, the iliocostalis lumborum is the lateral most muscle of the erector spinae. Um, if, if you need to remember them, go back to my lecture in the erector spinae block. And it goes above the quadratus lumborum muscle through, then it goes through the um, thoracolumbar fascia and then pass over the iliac crest. Um, so these nerves either pierce the thoracolumbar fascia above the iliac crest or at the iliac crest or goes keep most likely underneath the fascia and then pierce the gluteal uh, fascia and goes uh, above that uh, and more superficial. Uh, please note that these are very small nerves, even less than two millimeter. This is another uh, view more oblique, I would say this is about 30% oblique, 30 to 45% oblique, and, and you see that the gluteal medius here in the view, and indeed uh, most of the branches run up over the gluteal medius. Now, in, in this picture here, so as you see, the first thing you have the thoracolumbar fascia or the latissimus dorsi base, and underneath that you have the iliocostalis lumborum, which is the lateral muscle of the um, erector spinae. Once you remove them both, you start to see the nerve. So the nerve, the nerve peers through the iliocostalis lumborum, then go above above the muscle uh, between the the thoracolumbar fascia again and the muscle and it depends if you go more lateral or more superior than the fascia as you know it convert to the latissimus dorsi uh, this is more oblique view you see the muscles coming through the um, the iliocostalis lumborum and um, above the quadratus lumborum at this uh, level um, 
this is the longissimus thoracis, which is part also from the erector spinae. Now, here below the, the iliac crest, the nerve, as you see, it is above the gluteal fascia and, of course, the gluteus uh, maximus and the gluteus uh, uh, medius. Uh, this is another view, just to give you better understanding. So this is axial cut, um, say around L4 or L3 here. Um, so as you see, this is the erector spinae muscle. This is the quadratus lumborum. So the, mus the, the nerves come from here, go through the muscle, and, and keep going here and go above at this level um, and as you see here we are just above the iliac crest so again about L3 um, so to summarize if we think about the course of the nerve as if it's going above the iliac crest or below the below the iliac crest above the iliac crest starting from top we have skin and subcutaneous tissue or fat and then underneath that, you have the thoracolumbar fascia or latissimus dorsi, again, based on where is exactly you are looking. And underneath that, you have the superior cluing nerves running. Underneath the nerve, if you look more medially, you have the iliocostalis lumborum. Again, this is uh, one of the erector spinae muscles. And then more laterally, you have the quadratus lumborum muscle and a middle layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. If you keep going and you go and you look under the uh, iliac crest, here again you have skin subcutaneous fat. Under that you have the superior gluteal nerves which uh, are above the gluteal fascia and gluteus uh, uh, muscles, maximus and medius. And of course, the iliac crest when it run above the iliac crest. So I hope now the picture is clear for you. Now this is a this is an important anatomical studies, uh, very decent study. They looked at 109 cadavers, and that what they looked at they measured two distances. So this is your midline, and this is your uh, posterior superior iliac spine. So distance A is the distance between the midline to the nerve and they looked at the medial branch intermediate and lateral so the the mean distance between midline to the medial branch it's about seven centimeter uh, about 7.6 for the intermediate and about eight centimeter for the lateral and you see how this range up to 10 centimeter and this is up to five so anywhere between five and 10 centimeter you should see most of find most of these nerves now the other measurement they did they measured the distance between the posterior superior iliac spine and how far up uh, in the course of the iliac crest is the nerve so for the medial it's about 4.5 and here about five and here about 5.5 .5. so again about two inches here and then another important thing they looked at uh, how many of these patients they are actually inside what we call it the osteofibrous uh, tunnel which is this black uh, semi-cylindrical uh, semi uh, semi area so only about let's say 40 percent here here about let's say 28 30 percent and 13 percent within and this is why the medial branch is the most commonly branch get interrupted because it's the most common branch that exists in this uh, osteofibrous tunnel <clears throat> again the same study here they looked at how many of these nerves actually inside a tunnel um, Actually, the majority, as you see here, they, they are not running in a tunnel. Uh, the most common, the medial branch. And then you see here, intermediate and lateral. Interestingly, uh, some cadavers, they have two tunnels, 
and even very rarely uh, three tunnels. And if you, if, again, when you have tunnel there, more likely you can get entrapment. <clears throat> so this is a classic uh, dermatomal uh, uh, picture here. The clunian nerves, there are three of them, the superior, middle, and inferior. The superior that give you the medial, intermediate, and lateral, as we see here. So superior, which I'm focusing on this presentation, that's the classic dermatome. Uh, more closer here to uh, uh, coccyx and sacroiliac, um, the middle clunial, and below here, you have the inferior clunial. However, um, this is a, a new study. Uh, I like this study. Um, they, they did two important things. They looked at the dermatome of the superior cluinian nerves based on injecting 10 ml of methylene blue between the thoracolumbar fascia and the erector spinae at this level. And then they did some ultraviolet light photos and they mapped the dermatome. So the yellow color is <coughs> what you get from the superior clunian nerve block at this level. So as you see, <coughs> the block, as expected, is covering almost half. The upper half of the buttock is going lateral. By the way, this is the greater trochanter, and I will explain to you this in a minute. Then it goes cover part of the greater trochanter and then wrap around here and goes all the way up to the lumbar and you see. So you get the point. So all this area can be covered by the superior cluinian nerves block above the iliac crest. Now, what's also important in this study, <coughs> they compared the dermatome with the transversalis fascia plane block and the subcostalis nerve block and the purpose was to see can we cover all the incisions of hip surgery. As you know for hip surgery you can have uh, anterior incision, lateral incision, posterior incision with some modification. So here the DL is the direct lateral, the direct lateral and as you can imagine Part of this incision is under the dermatome of the superior colonial. And if you look at the posterior incision, oh yeah, a lot of this incision is covered by the superior colonial. So this is some seeds for thoughts. We will cover it when we talk about the clinical presentation. Now, clinical presentation. So interestingly, uh, the incidence of this is surprisingly high. It varies widely in the literature, but it can be up to 14%. It seems to be more common in the female. Typically, the patient presents with a lower back and buttock pain, and the patient somehow will point over the iliac crest, and we'll show you some pictures in a minute. Then the pain is typically neuropathic pain, so like burning pain, throbbing pain, uh, which is important to differentiate it from myofascial pain. Um, you might have some numbness, tingling, some cutaneous sensitivity when you examine the patient. Things that exacerbate the pains, classic bronchial standing, sitting, walking, churning in the bed, uh, squatting, uh, whichever increase the movement uh, of the nerve, the stretch of the nerve. Uh, pain even may exacerbate by backward extension, lateral bending and rotation, twisting. The pain may radiate to the back, up, or to the thigh, down, which we call it pseudo sciatica. It can go even to the foot. Now we're going to say, wait a minute, how come the superior cluinian nerves give you a radiating pain there? Well, remember, we have about 10% of these, in that specific kind of our study, um, they go to L, L, L5. And we have about 45% uh, originate from L4. So this is why you can get some uh, quote-unquote radiculopathic pain or sciatica here. Um, 
So also in the in the examination, it's important to palpate along the iliac crest, looking for tenderness and uh, a trigger point, which you know you always call it tendon-like sign. Uh, what I like to do, I use my thumb, and I move over the crest from medial to lateral, lateral to medial, constant pressure, looking for tenderness. And as I showed you in that anatomical study, uh, we should expect most of these nerves to be between five to 10 centimeters from the uh, uh, midline. Now, this is a classic uh, presentation about seven centimeter from midline. That's the maximum tender spot or the trigger point. Um, this, is a, this is again an interesting study. They studied 834 patients suffering from lower back pain and they found out based on their criteria of diagnosis, 14% met the criteria for superior cleaning neuropathy or entrapment. Um, among the 130 patients, 113 patients, <coughs> you see 35% of these patients walking increase the pain. 30% raising from seated position and 22% from standing, 14% bending forward and 10% bending uh, backward. The same study, um, this is um, uh, uh, granular data from uh, 19 patients. What I wanted to observe here, the age. So it's really uh, any age, right? And if you look at the, the, the gender here, uh, slightly more common in, in, in female. And if you look at the triggering uh, factors here, most likely spine surgery, um, again, the more extensive, the lower you go, the repeat. And then the, the presentation here, again, mostly, mostly buttock pain, lower back pain, sometimes uh, groin pain in few patients. Um, what is limiting Almost all of them, lim flexion is limited, some of them extension limited of the back. Again, what's also interesting, the duration of this is after the surgery, it, is, it varies between few months to uh, many uh, years. So here, this patient here, um, putting his hands above the iliac crest, pushing down and, and has also some antalgesic gait. So because of the of the pain. Uh, here, the, the other patient is uh, putting his hand above the iliac crest and notice how he is bending forward. Uh, bending forward stretch the nerve so uh, it can uh, trigger the, the pain and the pain can shoot down uh, the leg. So this patient, they have problem bending forward to pick up something or to tie sh their shoes or, or you, you can imagine. Now, differential diagnosis, these are a very important differential diagnosis you want to rule out. Myofascial pain, facet joint disease, lumbar spine stenosis, radiculopathy, sacroiliac joint. You must rule them out. Rare cases, um, uh, I've seen uh, a few of these cases like episacral lipoma or back mice. So, um, when you palpate, you can appreciate a lump there. And when you put your scan, you can find a lump over the bony uh, prominence in this example, the uh, posterior superior iliac spine. Now, another um, differential diagnosis is the iliolumbar syndrome um, related to the iliolumbar ligament, which pass from the iliac crest to the transverse processes of L4 and L5. Another important differential diagnosis is the uh, mean syndrome, main syndrome, the G is silent here, or thoracolumbar junction dysfunction or syndrome, which is a high heterogeneous term that has some arthropathy of the facet joints, typically T12 to L1, and entrapment of the superior cleaning nerves. Uh, the pain involves um, uh, three um, uh, places, uh, pelvic, lateral thigh, and inguinal groin uh, uh, pain. Um, so as you see in this image, you have some buttock pain, 
you have some groin pain and you have some lateral uh, uh, or thigh uh, uh, pain. So the pain is triggered by extension or uh, rotation, tenderness over the iliac crest uh, because uh, part of it is the superior cranial nerve uh, neuropathy or impingement. And then the treatment, uh, you can try some uh, trigger uh, uh, um, uh, facet joints injections or medial branch blocks or even uh, uh, superior cranial nerves uh, uh, block. And in this case, I will go above the iliac crest, of course. Now, you will see this picture. This is my algorithm, how I approach chronic buttock pain. You will see it in all my chronic buttock pain lectures. And uh, I'm not gonna go over details on this, but basically I have non-specific or upper third, middle third, and lower third. The superior cluny nerve is mostly uh, upper third, middle third, or and sometimes non-specific. And it's also important to differentiate that from the, the superior clunian neuropathy from the middle clunian neuropathy and the inferior clunian neuropathy. This is another nice study, nice review uh, uh, comparing uh, uh, between them. So because of its wide uh, variety of symptoms, superior clunian nerve entrapment should be part of your differential diagnosis of low back and buttock pain with or without uh, leg pain or groin pain. Again, if you don't think about the diagnosis, you will not find the diagnosis. So how we diagnose this? Um, most likely clinical presentation, history and physical examination. Um, then this is the ICD-10 code for the superior clunian nerve entrapment syndrome. Um, these are common diagnostic criteria in the literature. Basically, low back pain involve iliac crest and buttock, trigger point over the posterior iliac crest located approximately seven centimeter lateral from the midline, numbness and radiating pain in the superior cranial nerve area upon compression of that trigger point, and most importantly, positive diagnostic uh, uh, test. So diagnostic block need to be positive if you inject there, then you can diagnose superior cranial nerve entrapment or neuropathy. Uh, EMG sometimes imp uh, uh, helpful not to diagnose uh, superior cranial nerve and neuro uh, neuropathy, but to rule out lumbar radiculopathy and uh, pelvic x-ray um, can rule out some sacroiliac joint disease, some uh, hip joint disease, and MRI rule out um, facet joint disease, lumbar canal stenosis, radiculopathy, and etc. So how we can get this? Um, nowadays, most likely you will see patient with this pain because of entrapment. Entrapment of the osteofibrous tunnel um, uh, at the nerve at the osteofibrous tunnel, which is formed by the thoracolumbar fascia and the iliac crest. And as I showed you before, the middle branch is the most commonly affected. So nerve entrapment usually results from a combination of several types of trauma, traction, friction, and repetitive compression. Common example here, uh, those who uh, wear um, low-cut jeans with a tight Waistband or a wide belt uh, can compress the nerve over the iliac crest. Um, another common example: uh, uh, professional uh, cricket and golf players, because of their repetitive twisting uh, movement with um, uh, flexion and extension. Um, condition associated with increased muscle tone. Uh, interestingly, Parkinson's disease. Um, and there are some few case reports there. Vertebral body fracture, again, because this increased the muscle tone, so it can um, compress uh, the nerve as it travels in the uh, uh, layers that I showed you before. Um, surgical injury is also common, uh, as I showed you, uh, spine surgery. So the more extensive, uh, the higher the risk, the more lower you go, especially if you are fusing to the pelvis. And it is important to put that as one of the differential diagnoses for failed back surgery syndrome. Uh, iliac crest bone graft and harvesting, uh, this is a big one. Uh, it is less common procedure nowadays as we have more artificial bone to use. Um, 
posterior hip surgery, which is also a less common uh, procedure. But as I showed you, if we have a lateral extension, you might get some of these branches. And decubitus ulcer surgery, there was um, a case report. Now, how we treat that? Always start with conservative management. A course of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, you can, you can ice it, you can put some heat uh, pads. Uh, physical therapy, again, um, uh, stretches, important. Local anesthetic with steroid, this is diagnostic and can be therapeutic. And it can be a landmark technique, basically where you find the maximum tenderness uh, point over the iliac crest. You just can clean it and go directly until you hit the iliac crest and inject a couple of cc's there. Uh, fluoro, I'll go over that, and ultrasound, of course. Then you can do radiofrequency ablation. There are um, a case series with that. Cryotherapy, also some case series. Neurolysis, some case reports. And more recently now, we start to do peripheral nerve stimulators, and I will go over that and surgical decompression as a last resort. Now, let's start by the ultrasound guided injection. As you know by now, I, I am a big fan of ultrasound injections. Uh, so to refresh our memory, uh, this is the line I use to go, uh, we are above the iliac crest or below the iliac crest. So above the iliac crest, again, we have skin subcutaneous tissue fat, we have thoracolumbar fascia or latissimus dorsi, more lateral. We have superior cloning nerves. Then underneath that, medially, you have the iliocostalis lumborum muscle, which is the lateral muscle of the rectus spinae, and the lateral quadratus lumborum muscle, and the overlying uh, middle layer of the thoracolumbar fascia more laterally. Now, below this line, you have skin and subcutaneous tissue. Then you find the nerves. Then the nerves above the gluteal fascia, gluteal muscles, and the iliac crest. So which approach you should do? Shall you block it at the iliac crest, below the iliac crest, above the iliac crest? Well, my short answer, but you're gonna get the idea over the next few slides, it depends on what you are trying to treat. So it's all about the clinical presentation and what you are trying to treat and what's your next target. Now, let's start to learn above the iliac crest. So above the iliac crest, generally speaking, there are two approaches. One is to start from the lateral abdominal wall. So the lateral abdominal wall, the patient a prone, the patient in their stomach, and move medial. Other approach is just to palpate the iliac crest to you put your ultrasound there. So this is above the iliac crest. And remember, every time you get lost, your iliac crest is your friends. Go back to the iliac crest. Now, um, now we are above the iliac crest. We are coming lateral to medial with the linear ultrasound. It's very superficial, so only you need the linear ultrasound until you find the lateral border of the rectus spinae, right? Um, here, uh, the axial cut that I showed you earlier, so now you um, see the rector spinae and uh, you start to see um, uh, penetrate from lateral to medial and eventually you want your injectate uh, to spread above the rector spinae below the thoracolumbar fascia. So here, um, and I highlighted uh, this for you. So this green layer here is your uh, thoracolumbar fascia. Uh, this big muscle here, I rounded the rectus spinae, and, and then and then you have the latissimus dorsi from lateral, and you have this area here, which is really a fat pocket. So if you bring your needle and aim up to here, um, that's a very reasonable target, or you can aim uh, up to here. So see where is the quadratus lumborum at this specific level. Again, we are almost L L3 now. So here, again, you are uh, uh, um, above 
uh, this whole muscle here this whole muscle here is the erector uh, 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 spinae. So this is the latissimus dorsi. So latissimus um, dorsi. And underneath the latissimus dorsi, from medial, you have the multifidus, more lateral. Um, you will uh, find the uh, longissimus muscle. And then uh, the iliocostalis uh, uh, muscle at uh, more uh, lateral. So iliocostalis muscle, uh, longissimus muscle, multifidus muscle, they all form the erector spinae. So your plane is between uh, the erector spinae and the uh, latissimus uh, dorsi. Here is your needle coming from lateral to medial and you spread that uh, facial layer between, again, notice here, you start to have the thoracolumbar fascia, so you need to go underneath uh, that, and the thoracolumbar fascia is a continuation of the uh, latissimus dorsi. So, how we do it below the iliac crest? Uh, again, there are a couple of ideas to you, for you. Either you start from the pieces, the posterior superior iliac spine, and move upward and lateral. So again, your friend here will be the pieces. Or you just start at the iliac crest and move down. So let's see how we do that. So here, uh, we started by placing the ultrasound probe at the pieces. And we are moving uh, uh, up and lateral until we reach uh, the upper border of the posterior iliac crest. And here you have the erector spinae muscle, here the uh, uh, gluteus medius muscle, more lateral. And here there is a yellow uh, cylindrical, where we call it fat tunnel. The fat tunnel here has the nerves, namely the medial branches. And you might some, see some vessels inside that if you turn on some Doppler. So that's your target here. Now, um, let's look at this in another pictures. So you put your ultrasound at the pieces. That's what you see. You see the pieces. <laughs> and you see the gluteus maximus above that. Then you scan up and more lateral until you see this iliac crest, the posterior iliac crest, the erector spinae here, the fat tunnel here, the gluteus medius here. So let's, let's go over um, this video here. Sorry about that. So here uh, we place the, the ultrasound and the pieces and we start scanning above. Now here we start to see the erector spinae and the gluteus muscle start to disappear. Erector spinae start to show up. This is the gluteus medius. And here we see the thoracolumbar fascia. And here you will see the, 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 the fat tunnel where you see the nerve. Now, uh, if you want to block this nerve in a long axis view, you just need to turn your ultrasound perpendicular to the nerve, and you can do that. So here we are coming from uh, caudal, uh, uh, cephalic to caudal, superior to inferior, 
as you see here, this is the gluteus medius, and this is the thoracolumbar fascia. So as you see here, we're still trying to adjust the, the needle going still the injection as you see it's inside the the fascia so more adjustment here here we go that's a classic spread so you want to spread these two muscles the fascia and the thoracolumbar fascia and the gluteus medius now uh, here um, we just place the ultrasound probe at the iliac crest and here you see this is the iliac crest and you can if you imagine these are small uh, tiny bubbles if you wish uh, these are the branches of the superior cluinal nerves so you can block it at this level by simply bring your uh, needle and you go lateral to uh, medial and you inject above the iliac uh, uh, crest and, and you can get the, the three branches. Now here we brought the ultrasound transducer more uh, caudal, so I'm above the uh, gluteus uh, muscle here. Um, so the gluteus muscle here, the gluteus maximus muscle here, uh, you will notice that's the fascia of the gluteus and these are all fat so the nerves actually above the fascia and sometimes you find them inside the fat you just need to scan up and down to find that now here is another pictures for you just to memorize this so now I am starting from the buttock going up so I, I put my ultrasound this is the uh, 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 gluteus uh, maximus muscle and we are scanning uh, um, this is the fascia this is the fat you see the nerve and I'm gonna scan above so um, uh, again so this is at this level the gluteus um, uh, medius muscle and then here we scan above you see the iliac crest the nerve above the iliac crest you keep scanning above now you crossed, you are at the uh, quadratus lumborum, the nerve above the quadratus lumborum. Uh, this video here, again, we start to scan at the gluteus medius muscle. Going up. Now we are at the level of the iliac crest, the nerve is still above the iliac crest. Scanning up. Now we start to see the quadratus lumborum, the nerve above the quadratus lumborum. This is the thoracolumbar fascia here, or latissimus dorsi. And now you start to lose the, the nerve because now it goes inside the erector spinae. So, fluoroscopic guided, if I did not convince you enough with the ultrasound, or for whatever reason you want to do. Fluoroscopy guided is still possible and it's easy, but again, it depends on what we are trying to treat. So, the important landmark here is the osteoaponeurotic orifice. So, the osteoaponeurotic orifice, this is an AP view, uh, that's your landmark. Uh, once you put your needle, it's very important and very helpful to use some sensory stimulation and to see if you can develop some paresthesia that will mimic the pain for the patient and sometimes you just need to uh, move your needle more lateral and more medial but what is very important here you need to get some oblique views or lateral view because you do not want to cross the iliac crest because you will lose the nerve and you don't want to go there um, sometimes what's also helpful if you palpate the area of maximum tenderness and you put a mark there and you just go there as well it can be done now here is a recently published studies uh, it's um, a case series radiofrequency ablation and 
here they uh, place the radio frequency cannula and above the osteoaponeurotic orifice they stimulate and they need to move their needle slightly medial and superior to get the maximum stimulation uh, notice this is slightly medial to the osteoaponeurotic orifice so here is the osteoaponeurotic orifice and here is more zoomed in image so osteoaponeurotic orifice more medial uh, to that so stimulation is super helpful um, finally you can also do uh, peripheral nerve stimulator and the peripheral nerve stimulator you can use multiple leads um, whether long lead short lead multiple electrodes short electrodes again it depends on what you are trying to treat and you can place it with ultrasound guidance or with fluoro guidance what is important here about this image notice um, the the lead should be above should be above the iliac crest and um, pointing and directing posterior not anterior because again you will lose the nerves so you need to oblique and go lateral and oblique lateral oblique and ap to make sure the lead end up back to the iliac crest and how to insert your needle you can come from medial to lateral with very oblique angle so you can follow the trajectory of the iliac um, crest here are uh, very useful uh, references and thank you for watching